something I've been keeping up with, so I figured I would try and share this information with you guys, try my best to unpack it, and I'm talking about none other than the Kendrick Lamar, Drake, Metro Boomin, rap beef that is going on right now. This has been a very eventful week in the rap scene, and I thought that I would provide you guys with a bit of context, a little bit of a background history and timeline of the events that led up to the ongoing chaos that is going on right now. So, we'll set the scene, traveling all the way back to November 4th, 2022. so much time on break. 
brings joy to people's lives every day. And then to that tweet, Drake seemingly responded on his Instagram story with a couple lines from a Jay-Z song saying, damn little mans, I'm just trying to do me. If the record's two mil, I'm just trying to move three. So that kind of sets the stage for everything. Uh, now we finally get to coming to the, the year that we're in now, 2024. And the first domino to fall was on March 8th, 2024, when uh, Metro Boomin and Future announced a pair of collaborations on the way. And uh, yeah, <laughs> this was going to be very interesting. You know, Metro is very active in the last couple years, and he's known for doing these collaboration albums. He's got a couple with 21 Savage himself, you know, Savage Mode 1 and Savage Mode 2. And he's got these, like, soundtracks for the Spider-Man movies. He just had a very successful album, so people are very hyped. And so on March 22nd, 2024, Metro and Future released the first of their two collab albums, and it is called We Don't Trust You. It sells 251,000 units in week one, debuting at number one, and it also sets the hip-hop world on fire with the song Like That. It featured Kendrick Lamar, and it debuted number one on the Billboard Hot 100. This song, it had a lot of disses from Kendrick Lamar towards Drake and J. Cole. He took the lines that were addressed towards him on First Person Shooter, and he flipped them back on J. Cole and Drake's face. So, here are some of the lines that Kendrick raps on the song. I'll just let you take a look and see how you're feeling about them. Uh, but I can summarize the, the sentiment, which is basically, uh, miss me with all that know, the stink dissing, you know, don't, don't come at me with all this weak shit, <laughs> excuse my language, uh, you know, I don't do any of that, no subliminals, you're gonna diss me, diss me head on, and, uh, in regards to the big three that J. Cole was talking about, Kendrick says, no, nah, there's no big three, it's just big me, and, um, he also has this line talking about Prince outliving Mike Jack. Now, this is in reference to one of Drake's lines on the album where he compares himself to Michael Jackson, saying that he's one away from Michael, beat it, and that's the end of First Person Shooter. And, um, you know, in reference to Prince and Michael Jackson having a little bit of a rivalry during their time, Kendrick says, you know, Prince did outlive him, and he is trying to say that he will ultimately outlast when it comes to the money, power, and respect aspect of their legacies, uh, mostly in respect. And so, in response to this, on April 5th of 2024, J. Cole drops a surprise mixtape titled Might Delete Later, and on it, he responds to Kendrick Lamar with his own disses, and he says, your first shit was classic, your last shit was tragic, your second shit I forgot <laughs> it was like really kicked in the middle of these lines I forgot that I can't say some of these lines uh, your second shit put people to sleep but they guessed it your third shit was massive and that was your prime so it is speculated he is referring to good kid mad city of Kendrick Lamar so he praises it calling it a classic but then he punches down on Mr. Morale and the big steppers Kendrick Lamar's latest album saying that it was tragic then he talks about how To Pimp a Butterfly, one of the most critically acclaimed hip-hop artist uh, albums of all time, released by Kendrick Lamar in, I believe, 2015. Uh, he talks about being overhyped. You know, a lot of people, they're gassing it up, but it is a sleepy album. And then he praises Damn, saying that Damn was Kendrick's prime, and I guess that he's now past his prime. Um, and so, you know, people were feeling it, people were starting to feel the tensions brewing, the heat rising, wondering what Kendrick is going to say, when Drake is going to respond, but all of that gets flipped on its face just a couple days later, on April 8th, 2024, when J. Cole rescinds his diss. He takes the stage at his own Dreamville Fest, and he publicly apologizes to Kendrick Lamar, saying that his diss was the lamest, goofiest thing that he has ever done in his career. And 
he speaks out to Kendrick, saying that it's all love. He also announces that he will be deleting the track from his mixtape and removing it from all streaming services. And on April 9th of 2024, Metro and Future dropped their second collab album of the year titled We Still Don't Trust You, and this album had everyone teaming up and uniting to take aim at Drake. You've got The Weeknd, you've got ASAP Rocky, uh, you've got Future, Metro himself, all these guys are sending their jabs towards Drake, and the best part of all, they have a surprise feature on this album on a song called Red Leather. And it was J. Cole. Uh, this was a huge surprise for everyone involved just because, you know, for J. Cole to go on tour with Drake and to be on First Person Shooter to respond to Kendrick's diss and then immediately revoke his diss, apologize, and then be featured on the opposition. It totally seemed like he switched sides. Now, th the real story is that song was released, or it was recorded many, many months before any of this began, so it wasn't J. Cole switching sides, but the way that Metro and Future did J. Cole on this, it was beautiful, um, very peak cinema moment. Then, after that, you have, on April 13th of 2024, Drake's response as push-up leaks on the song Drake mostly clowns Kendrick Lamar's height and shoe size with the cover art and the bars. The cover art is uh, one of those tags that you see in a shoe that lists the size, and it says seven, uh, basically making fun of Kendrick Lamar's feet for not being big. Uh, and some of the most notable bars on that song are, you won't ever take no chain off us, how the frick is you big step in with a size seven men's on. Um, another one is Drake talking about how the whole industry is kind of uniting against him. He says, what the frick is this, a 20 v one What's a prince to a king, he a son? Get more love in the city that you from. Metro, shut your whole ass up and make some drums. You know, he, it hits a little bit harder when Drake says it than when I whisper it in my my tone, <laughs> but impressive clap back from Drake at this point, you know, Kendrick sets up the tension very well, J. Cole, you know, people, they really criticize him for bowing out, but it's speculated that he is realizing he's getting into something way deeper than he intended to, like Kendrick and Drake, there's a lot more brewing for these two, so J. Cole kind of stepped out, and then they brought him back inside into the shelter and comfort of the home because uh, he doesn't want the smoke like these two do with each other. He kind of alludes to the fact that this is not something new that was kicked off by like that. It's been brewing. It's been there. Push-ups drops on streaming platforms, and on April 19, 2024, Drake drops a second diss track titled Taylor Made Freestyle with AI features from Snoop Dogg and Tupac. Now on this song, he calls out Kendrick for being too scared to drop the same week as Taylor Swift's new album, and he says, like, you know, you're kind of just controlled by the industry. Maroon 5 asked you for a song, you give them a song. Taylor Swift asked you for a song, you give them a song. So, he's, you know, making fun of Kendrick in these ways, and he's also clowning him for not responding. Um, now at this stage, I'll say, Let's say this is Kendrick, and let's say this is Drake. You've got first-person shooter. There's no real beef established. Like that, definitely. Kendrick gets elevated. He's up here. Then, J. Cole on Drake's side. You've got the response from J. Cole. Maybe slightly up there. People weren't really feeling it. It was kind of a weak diss. Then, you have J. Cole apologizing. Definitely their stock plummeted. It was embarrassing if you're on that side. Then, push-ups leaking and push-ups finally dropping. It was pretty good. You know, like, I'd say Drake at this point, the only time in the beef that he's actually in the loop. Because like that, as good as it was and as catchy as the song was, I don't think it had the same level of aggression that 
push-ups did. Push-ups really had a lot of disses, a lot of well-thought responses, and that too, it wasn't just to Kendrick, it was to Rick Ross, it was to ASAP Rocky, it was to The Weeknd, everyone that talked about Drake, Drake responded to all of them on one beat, and it was a pretty nice song, so I'd say that was a small one to two week period where Drake was at actually winning ahead in this race. Uh, and then Drake drops the Taylor made freestyle. And I have to say, I wasn't really feeling it. I think it dropped him a little bit. It was still ahead. But that song has AI verse. I don't know. Snoop Dogg is not even dead. Why would you get a Snoop Dogg AI verse when the real Snoop Dogg is alive and running? Uh, an AI verse from Tupac. Very weird move. Uh, Tupac's estate did not like it. They are selling Drake over it. Um, and I think that, like, Drake trying to make fun of Kendrick for some of these things was kind of ironic. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen the ad of Drake in Taylor Swift for Apple Music where they're singing each other's songs while working out and making a fool of themselves. I'd argue that is far cornier and worse than Kendrick doing a verse for Bad Blood on a Taylor Swift song. So I don't really know what Drake is spewing on about at this point, but yeah. Then another week and a half passes, and we have on April 30th, 2024, Kendrick finally responding with his diss track, Euphoria. And on this song, he raps over three different beats, detailing how much he despises Drake and how he doesn't really see him as a voice of the culture. He has lines like, yeah, Cole and Aubrey know I'm selfish. The crown is heavy. He's trying to say, like, yeah, as much as these guys want to compare themselves to me, I am the best. I, I bear the burden of being the best. And then he says, yeah, frick all that push and B. Let me see you push it, D. You better off spinning again on him. <laughs> you better off spinning again on him. You thinking about pushing me? Now, this is in reference to Drake's battle with Pusha T back in 2018. Um, another well-known rap beef of that time. Basically, to summarize in a few sentences what happened back then, Lil Wayne and Pusha T had a little bit of shots towards each other, and then Drake joined the battle, sending some subliminals to Pusha T. Pusha T got wind of this and started sending more towards Drake. Drake then released a diss track in which he talked about um, Pusha T's wife, and that was a huge mistake because just a few days after Tuppy Freestyle, that diss track from Drake, Pusha T annihilated him with a, his own diss track called The Story of Adidon. Uh, this diss track had a cover which featured Drake dressed in blackface on the song, he, Pusha T basically revealed to the entire world that Drake has a secret son that he is hiding, and he had the son with a porn star that he refuses to claim as his girl. And so, there are a lot of other disses in the song, but that one was the biggest one. Uh, it was huge news. Drake kind of didn't say anything, kind of denied it. Then he had to come out and admit to the fact that he actually does have a son. He had to do multiple to make sure it was his son, and, uh, yeah, Pusha T basically forced Drake into fatherhood, and Drake never did anything about it. Um, there were rumors, reports, that he had a nuclear diss track that would have ended Pusha T's career, uh, but he never, never released it, so I don't see how anyone could say that Drake actually won that beef. Uh, he definitely got embarrassed, and so here, Kendrick Lamar is kind of poking at his scabs and saying, like, you know, you, you better finish off your business with him before you start up something with me. And then, yeah, the song basically ends with Kendrick singing, we don't want to hear you say the N-word no more. Um, kind of just telling Drake that, like, you are not the black voice that you think you are. You think you speak for the culture, but you're not really from here. You don't speak for us the way that I do. Speaking from Kendrick Lamar's perspective, um, he talks a lot about black culture on the song and the community and how Drake is kind of an outsider looking in but pretending that he is in the center of it all. 
cover-up attempt to hide the fact that he was misled. And then in regards to the pedophile allegations, all Drake says is, just for clarity, I feel disgusted. I'm too respected. If I was freaking young girls, I promise I'd been arrested. I'm way too famous for this shit you just suggested. I don't know if that is the right way to respond to that. Ah, uh, I'm too famous to be a pedophile. Ha ha. If I was, they would have got me. I don't know about that. And then finally, he also doubles down on an allegation that he made in Family Matters, where he says that one of Kendrick Lamar's kids with his wife, Whitney, is actually his manager, Dave Freeze. So, yeah, that's all. So, now you're all caught up, up to date on this beef. And, um, yeah, let me know what you think. I'm very invested to see where it goes. I think that we've peaked. I don't think that it's going to get any better than what already has happened. But I'm interested in seeing what more comes out. How Kendrick responds to these plant leaks. Uh, the fact that they're saying that they had a plant that gave him fake information. I don't know. It seems like Kendrick really does not like Drake. And Drake is kind of just like running around doing whatever. Um, I don't really have a horse in this race, as I said. I'm just admiring from a distance. The music is good. It's fun. subscribe. I'll be putting out more videos as the weeks go on. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you